this many faith traditions present, we pray in many different ways. And so I invite you to pray in your own way as I offer this prayer blessing. Within this house and among those who build this house, may there be blessings and peace. Shanti Rapaha, Shanti Rausadaya. And God, what we're building here today is more than a house. It is a community across our great diversity. And may this only be the beginning of what we can build as the faith community here in Charlotte. Bless this house. Bless this house, Bless this house oh Lord, we pray. That was the first nail. Bless these walls so firm and stout, keeping want and trouble out. Mecklenburg Ministries has monthly clergy lunches for several reasons, to build community and also to be out in public modeling inclusion so that we're practicing what we preach. And so across our faiths and across our races, we get together. Well, last November at our last meeting of the year, we said, you know, we need to do more. And Sister Andrea Inkrot, a nun who's on our board of directors, said, why don't we come together as interfaith clergy and build a habitat house? And it was like wildfire. Everybody went, that's it. That's exciting. Everybody so believes in habitat and what habitat does. We went, yes. So then, can you raise the $60,000? And we needed 60 clergy was our original goal, with the stretch goal of 80. Pretty soon, we had eight faiths representing 11 faith traditions and we have 114 clergy and spiritual leaders from across the city who will be working on this house. And it will be holy ground because it's got so many people praying for it. We are thrilled about this project because it brings together two of our loves. One is habitat and building houses uh, together. And the other is bringing the faith community together in Charlotte. I came out here today not only to build a house for a family who needs it, which is a huge issue in our community, affordable housing but also to build bridges of understanding and connections with the other clergy in our community. I might not go into a mosque, I might not go into a temple, I might not go into a Baha'i place of worship, but coming out here and working under the sun together is a unifying uh, place of action. But here we're not only experiencing what other people believe, hearing about their beliefs and their practices, we're arm to arm, shoulder to shoulder, doing work. Muhammad the prophet said, he said, you will never know a person until you have worked with them. So we, we get to know one another. We work with them. We share, uh, share our experiences. We share our gifts. And we break down barriers. And I think Habitat for Humanity is a great organization for breaking that about. And uh, all I can say is I thank God for Habitat for Humanity. I think it's important for um, different houses of faith to come together for these kinds of projects uh, because it gives us a chance to live out the tenets of our faith, uh, to be charitable, uh, to be loving, uh, to work for the good of the community. What I have learned about the different faith traditions is that we all have that same teaching of, of helping people who, who are in need. So that, that goes across all faith traditions and, and that's definitely, I think it's in keeping with what the mission of Habitat is and what each faith tradition has. And I believe in digging deeper into my own faith and uh, understanding more about who Jesus was and what Jesus taught, I find myself being brought together with that which is dearest and deepest and most, most meaningful to Muslims and uh, Hindus and Buddhists and Jews and, and all of those who are represented here today. Well, I think it's so important clergy do set an example. It's part of their job description, I would say, but it's not just their job description, it's anyone who's a person of faith that all of our holy books say we are to make a difference in this world, we're to make it a better place. It's important that the religious, the clergy, the, the people that have chosen this as a vocation step out and say, you know, stop with all the, the division, stop with all of the uh, rhetoric about how much we're different and let's embrace how we're the same and let's learn from one another. When we do these kind of things, we recognize that whatever difference we have are not enough to separate us. And we really need to, to find more of the, of the unity that we share together rather than our differences. If there is one common denominator that all religions have, okay, is helping your neighbor. 
the clergy, the working for the church, you know, is a, is a special for me. I feel like it's a blessing, it's a, it's a gift. When you learn to build understanding, it builds trust. Trust builds relationships, and relationships builds peace. And if we want peace in our world, then we'll learn to work together and respect each other. There are religious extremists across the world who do actions that give religion a bad name, and they are the actions that make the headlines. But every day, anywhere in the world, you'll find people doing good in the name of religion. Acts of feeding the hungry, housing the homeless, healing the sick, coming together to build interfaith bridges of understanding, but those actions don't generally make the headlines. So Habitat for Humanity enables people to come together and to do good in the name of religion. And we really thank you for coming out today. We thank you for, for uh, <clears throat> manifesting to the community how important uh, cooperation is, how important fe fellowship is, how important communication is across our lines of faith. And um, we thank you for building a house in the process. The way I am thinking, this is a beginning. You know what I hope will come from this project? is that this project will be an example and inspire other communities, other cities, other states, other nations to say, wow, that's a great idea. Let's bring together our faith leaders from across our many different faiths. And instead of the headlines being how faith, people of faith are fighting, let's show people of faith building and people of different faiths coming together and working side by side. I loved watching our imam and our rabbi pounding nails beside each other and having theological conversations. Wouldn't it be neat to multiply that around our world? <laughs> this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be very, very glad in it. This particular house has really been a highlight of, of my 10-year career of working on Habitat Houses. It's, it's just been a fantastic experience. The idea you know, just came to me. God gave it to me. I said it at this clergy meeting, and it took off. Let no fear enter through this door. Let no conflict be found in this place. Rather, let this home be filled with the blessings of joy and with peace. It is a day of celebration, um, and we are honored as an organization uh, to be able to partner with Mecklenburg Ministries. And we thank you all. And I want to again say thank you to Myers Park Presbyterian Church, who really gave the basis for this to happen. I hope we will all participate in having a second <coughs> annual house next year for maybe neighbors of y'all. But I certainly look forward to being part of it this year, not only in helping build it, but getting the financial resources for this house to be built and to give someone a home. Come and join us next year for the second Mecklenburg Ministries Clergy Habitat Builds. I would invite all clergy, spiritual leaders, and congregations to participate in the Habitat Bill sponsored by Mecklenburg Ministries. It's a great experience. It was my first time, and certainly I'm going to be doing this on a regular basis. I invite every one of you, every spiritual leader from every faith tradition, to come and join us and be part of building this house. Last year we had 65 uh, houses of faith participate in over a hundred spiritual leaders. Let's make it a hundred houses of faith and 150 spiritual leaders and come on and join us.